Hello everyone, welcome back to 45 Drives. We got another tech tip for you today. Today, we are talking about the Houston Module Task Scheduler. Now, we've talked about that one before. Um, you can check out some of the other videos on it. What is it, real briefly? Well, it's a UI-based, really clean and easy way to schedule automated tasks for your Linux server, like backing up your data, um, sending it to another system with ZFS, doing scrubs, all kinds of stuff, right? So. Since we've talked about it all before, why don't you go check out those videos? But what I'm here to talk about today is some new functionality we put into it. Cloud syncing. Moving your data from your storage server running Houston up into the cloud. All right, so automa automating your cloud sync tasks with Task Scheduler. That's a new function that we're added in. And uh, what is the purpose of that? Well, it's pretty much in the name. It's about syncing your data up into the cloud and vice versa. A good storage system is a bit of a hybrid system. You've got your local on-prem data, you have it maybe somewhere else, and you have it somewhere, somewhere else up in the cloud. What's really cool about this is we have it integrated with various number of cloud providers like Wasabi, Amazon, Google Drive, Backblaze, list goes on. And um, it is a key part of keeping your data backed up, safe, and recoverable should something crazy happen, like, you know, the metaphorical meteor that somehow destroys everyone's data. But with that said, why don't we hop over to the screen, I'll show you what it looks like, how it functions. Okay, so here we are looking at the task scheduler module within our Houston install. We're on a good F8X1 Storinator system, and let's take a look at the new Cloud Sync task. So, we're going to hit Add Task. Well, let's just give it a name. Let's just call it uh, Sync Task. That's really exciting. Um, like everything, there's tool tips on just about everything to give you some more information. So, like what it can have and what it can't have in names and more information. But we'll get into that. So task template. Like we said before, there's a bunch of different tasks that we kind of pre-template for you. But today we are talking about the cloud sync task. So we'll click that and it pops up. So the first thing you'll consider when you want to create a sync task is the configuration of the remote. What is the remote? Well, that's where we're sending the data or where we're going to pull the data from. The point is the remote is somewhere else. It's the cloud. Um, so we built this in such a way that it works with a bunch of different cloud providers. So in the example we're looking at on the screen here, we've already set up a bunch of different remotes. But let's just take a look at the screen if this was brand new and what we would do to create a new remote. So a new location to put data or pull data from. So we'll click that and we'll hit create new. So when this comes up, what will we call it? So I won't give it a name yet. Well, I just want to look through the list. Because actually I'm not going to make a new remote. We're going to use one of the existing ones. I just want to take you through this screen. So the cloud provider, so out of the box, what we support right now is Dropbox, Google Drive, Google Cloud, Microsoft, Azure Blob Storage, Backblaze B2, Wasabi S3 Storage, Amazon S3, and Ceph S3 Storage. So any of those cloud providers can be used right now. Um, that's not the end of the list. That is the most common ones that were requested from people and won't get used. If you have another cloud provider you want to look, work with, at the end of the day, the main driver that's running this task is a tool called our clone. So if our clone supports it, we can build it into the UI. So in this case, we would choose our provider. So let's say uh, Google Drive. So we've worked with Google to authenticate our app with it so we can use OAuth to connect everything in and you'd fill in all this information that is specific for Google Drive. Maybe we want to do Amazon S3. So we'd want the access key, secret key, Maybe we want to work with Wasabi. Oh, I clicked Amazon again, my bad. Maybe we want to work with Wasabi. And again, same idea, access key, whatever. Um, so that's how we would create a new remote. We already have some created already. Google Drive, AWS, B2, Wasab, Wasabi. Can't help but make that joke, right? Um, we'll, we'll, we'll link that in the description. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but select our remotes here. So let's pick maybe Google Drive. See, and then we put a little tooltip indicator of like which one you've chosen just to keep it easy in case you call it something differently. Dropbox, Backblaze B2, everything. So anyway, let's do our first remote. We'll, we'll send it up to Google Drive. Uh, next, you would pick your transfer type. Do you want to copy all your files up there? Do you want to move your files there? Do you want to sync your files? Uh, what's the difference? Most over the tooltip. It'll tell you which each one is. 
Copy copies the files to the remote, skipping files that are already there. Move literally does that. It moves them to the remote and deletes them locally. Sync, make sure that everything's perfectly in sync, like a mirror between the two of them. Um, I'll choose copy for now. Uh, we can choose the directionality of this. We can push it from the local server here the, that's running Houston and push it into the cloud, or we can go the other way around and we can pull it out of the cloud remote into the local directory. Um, you would then have to give it a local path, so where on the server that you want to send or pull data from. Um, so we have a pool already called tank slash dozer. And um, that trailing slash matters. So again, the tooltip gives you some ideas here. If you put the trailing slash, it'll only copy the stuff that's within that, not the parent directory, just everything in it. If you remove the slash, it'll copy that directory and everything beneath it. And for files, you just specify the full file path. So uh, some R cloneisms there, but again, this stuff can, uh, I don't know, remembering all that stuff can be difficult at times. So we've loaded this thing with some tooltips to help guide you. And then target path, this will get automated when you make that first uh, remote and it fills in for you. Um, below here are some options for our clone, like the number of concurrent transfers you want to do. If you want to check your update or check first to see if um, um, uh, it's a valid uh, integrity of like what you want to send and like, oh, something's weird here. Uh, you can run an update, only send new stuff and you can do a dry run. So you just want to see if it runs. Uh, you can include, include certain files, you can exclude certain files and use rejects to do that. Um, and then you can use any extra parameters if needed. If you really want, you can expand into the advanced options and do some crazier stuff there, but we'll leave that out for now. Um, from there, you would hit add your task. And then, so our task is created, now we have to schedule it. Because remember, scheduling is in the name of the module. So, in this case, I'm going to want this thing to run daily. So I'm just going to hit daily, I'm going to hit save interval. At the start of the hour, at midnight, every day, every month, every year, sync my stuff. So I'm going to hit schedule, hit yes. So we'll save. Okay, so the task hasn't run yet, because remember I said to run at midnight, which would be great, but I want to run it right now. So we can do a one-off if you want. Gives you some information about what its schedule is, everything like that. Run now, hit yes. Our tooltip's up in the starts. Oh, it started running. It's completed. If you want to see some logs, it'll tell you exactly what it did. You can close there. If you wrote notes on what the task was, you can have your notes there. You can write them here. You can do it in there. Close that. Or you can change the schedule. Maybe, maybe this is too much. I don't want to do this. I'd rather just have this run weekly. So I can save that interval, save schedule. Boom. Everything's perfect. Maybe you're paranoid and you want to send to multiple remotes at the same time. Add a new task. Create another one. Maybe go to Cloud Sync and maybe, maybe you put something wrong in or you have to change your access code of one of them. So boom, you can manage one of your existing um, um, remotes. So you can click in here and change some information. So that, my friends, I'm going to cancel this one, is an overview of how you set up a Cloud Sync in the task scheduler. Okay, so that's a look at the new Cloud Sync functionality within the Task Scheduler module for the Houston UI. Um, it is now currently available on the 45 Drives testing repositories, and we expect this to go stable in the next coming days. So if you have any questions, comments, or whatever, reach out. As always, we'd love to hear from you. And um, you know what? You guys have a good day.